Hi everybody. Good afternoon and once again welcome to the Power Packed Summit, the virtual summit as the lockdown with benefit. My name is David Kankam and today we are talking about business and usual. Today we are talking about business and usual. Makesia, I say you thank you for watching. We are talking about business and usual. And what we're going to talk about or what we are discussing today is to how to describe how to um sorry, how to do a presentation that will we, that will help you win a deal or that will help you to successfully secure a deal for yourself. One would ask, why should I bother myself to go through the dynamics of uh, win, of looking or of of trying to find any dynamics of uh, structuring a presentation or doing a proposal? The answer then is that it is very critical and it's very essential. In every profession, there are dynamics. In every profession, there are guidelines and principles that one has to follow in order to excel in that profession, in order for you to be good at what you do. And so as entrepreneurs, as business people, as business developers, and as business executives, there are certain certain dynamics that one has to follow in order to be able to win deals successfully there are a lot of documentations and a lot of things that business developers have to do one of them has to do with presentation you can decide to do the presentation physically by going into boardrooms or going into board meetings and trying to explain your product and services or pr trying to explain your solution to your prospect or to your partners so you can help them to be able to achieve what it is that they want to achieve. The other one is also sending uh, documented, documented uh, documentation to them by way of proposal which they can read and be able to understand what your solution is or what you can provide for them. Today, we're going to look at how to structure a presentation and in doing a presentation, what are the things that you have to look out for as the person that is doing the presentation and also what is the your what are your prospects looking out for. So first off, we have to also know that today we are going to take it down. We are not going to do any fluff, no fluff, no hyperbole, no no ambiguity. Today we are just going to put it down and try and learn sales or try and learn business development. First off, let's look at how some people or how we have been doing business as usual with presentations, how people normally structure their present presentations when they want to win businesses or when they want, they want to win contracts. First of all, a lot of people when they are structuring their presentations or when they are doing their presentation, they would like to begin with an introduction thinking that, all right, let me do an introduction of myself, an introduction of my company. So if I introduce myself, what I do, what I can do, what I've been able to do over the years, and I may be able to win the customer's attention and I can sell to the person. And after the introduction, what it is that they do is that they also go to agenda. For, so for example, I, I go through the first slide will let me, let me do an introduction of myself, my company and what I do. Then the second slide, normally people would want to do an agenda for the meeting okay what are we going to achieve at the end of the day what do we expect to achieve that is what we call the agenda and after that they will sometimes do what you call mission statement so they will do a mission this mission statement vision statement of themselves or of the of them or of their company sometimes some people go as far as do their company policies uh, company mantra and all of that some people even give you a whole company profile sometimes what we realize is that some people even give you the company capacity what it is that they can do, where and where they have branches, where where and where they have points of presence. So sometimes so, some people even do a map indicating the regions they are in, the countries they are in, where their partners are, where their, 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 their footfalls are and all of that just for the person or just for the client, the suspect, sorry, to see what their leverage is, what they can do at what point in time, what they have been doing, and all of that. That is not bad. That is not bad. I mean, it's it's what we have been doing 
from time immemorial that is why I, I i decided to coin this presentation and make it business unusual today we are going to look at a different way of doing presentation the narrative i just gave is not bad people have been using it for a long time but in these times that we are in we are not in normal times we are not in times that people would want to sit down with you and mind you first five to ten minutes of every business presentation first five to ten minutes of every business presentation or every sales presentation are very critical they are the times when decisions are being made they are the times when decisions are being made so when every business person comes to sit there in the meeting room or in the boardroom with you looking at you doing the presentation they ask themselves okay wasn't it for me what can you do for me what do you know about my product what do you know about my company what do you know that is our hassle what is our problem what is our struggle what are we going through that is our headache if you are somebody that has been able to find out their company's problem it means that you are one step ahead of closing that deal or you are one step ahead of winning that business with your prospect or with your customer You also need to find out that what exactly does the person want. So going into a presentation, structuring a presentation, if you do not know what exactly I want, or if you do not know what exactly I am going through, or if you don't know what exactly I have been battling with over the years, it will be very difficult for you to sell to me, or it will be very, very difficult for you to tell me that you can give me a solution to my product, or you can give me a solution to what exactly my business find itself in now so for example we live in a COVID 19 era where businesses have gone down a lot of businesses are not operating even for those that are operating they have switched on what it's called business continuity program what it means is that they have they have put on uh, certain aspect put on hold certain aspects of their businesses and they are also running certain aspects of their businesses some companies have made their their staff to go home work from home others have made yourself to be redundant for the meantime others are trying to come up back at their feet so in these times these times are not normal people do not have time to sit with you for 45 minutes for one hour and listen to your presentation trying to tell to them trying to sell to them trying to convince them of what you can do for them in other words the best way for you to win their attention or for you to win their trust or for you for them to know that indeed you can really help them is to let them know that you understand their solution their problem sorry you understand what it is that they are going through and you can have a solution for them a very fine model to examine a company or look at what problem a company is facing or what problem a company is going through is to look at the Michael Porter's forces. We call it the Michael Porter's forces. The Michael Porter is a professor at the Harvard Business School. He has, for those of you that are in business management, you are students of management, and those of you that are marketers, professional marketers, you've learned marketing and all that, you've come across Michael Porter a lot of times in your thesis and in your, in the most of your, uh, what do you call it, ac academics. So Michael Porter came out with five, he calls it uh, Michael Porter's five forces. And what these five forces really say is that the five forces lets you know what a business is facing, what a business is going through, the challenges a business is going through. So as, a as, as an entrepreneur, if I have developed a solution and I want to go and sell to company A, or I want to go and give my solution to company B, what solution can I give to company B? How am I going to give that solution to company B? How would I know what company B is going through? Or how would I know that company B actually has a problem? So my reporters five forces, the first, the first force, the first number one talks about their direct competition. So as, a as somebody who is doing a presentation to a company or a management who wants to give them a solution to their problem, you should find out, for example, if you want to give a solution to Impact Africa, for example, you have to find out what companies are competing with Impact Africa in the industry. 
in my region, in my camp, in my country? What are my direct competitors? Who am I sharing the market with? That is what you have to find out with. The second thing you have to find out, the second thing you have to research about is that you have to find out who are my who are the threats for of new entrants. Michael Porter says the second force is the threat of new entrants. What I am providing right now, the solution I am providing right now, a startup, a startup company is providing the similar solution. You understand? So I, if I am charging this amount, because it's a startup company, that startup company also have that muscle to provide that same solution. So my, my clients can go to that startup company. So that is one problem that I am also facing as a business. So as, a, as somebody who is doing a presentation, you need to find out, number one, the company's direct competitor. Number two, you need to find out the threat to new entrants. What are their threats? What are their fears as a company? And one of them is that new companies springing up, providing the same product or the same services that they are providing. And the third problem or the third challenge that every company faces, which with each every salesperson or every entrepreneur or every business developer has to understand is sorry, substitute product. Substitute, substitute product. So for example, if I am selling computers, or laptop computers right and that is what i am into that is my business a, a very fine substitute product for my business will be a tablet if people want to buy computers or laptop computers and they don't buy laptop computers they will go to the next company and buy a tablet that is my challenge that is my problem so if you're able to find out this or if you're able to identify that this is my problem or this is my challenge, you can be able to really and be in my shoes and then can you understand what I'm going through and structure your presentation in a way that you can win my attention in the first five to ten minutes. The third one is bargaining power of bias. Sorry, the bargaining power of bias. There are different products in the market these days. There are lots of people offering different products and people are also giving un 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 unbelievable discounts and all of that. And so the demand has gone up. When demands go up in economics, when demand go up, supply comes down. We all know that. So what happens is that when the, the, the buyer has the, a bargaining power, it means that there is a pressure on you for you to reduce your price. What do you do? Are you going to reduce your price? Or as, as, as somebody who is selling to the customer, are you going to teach the person how to insulate himself against price reduction, against the pressure from the buyers for them to reduce their price? These are some of the things that you have to structure in your presentation. And mind you, you, you ain't got a lot of time. You have only five to ten minutes to put all of these things together. Forget about your company profile. Forget about your capacity. Forget about your 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 POV. That's your points of prep. Uh, uh, points of points of pres uh, presence. POP. Where your company operations are. Forget about how long you have been in business. Yes, you can provide that at the latter part of your presentation if you will. As a matter of fact, the mere fact that your prospect invited you to come and have a presentation with them or to come and sell to them means that they have done their research about you. They have done their research about you. And so they know quite stuff about you, right? So that thing that you are telling them about your organizational profile, your capacity, your mission statement, your vision statement, all of these things are available on your website, I believe. So the company could go to your website and find out these things for themselves. What they are really looking out for is that, what can you do for me in these times? We are in the era of COVID-19. My business is struggling. My business is going down. Do you know my competitors? How do I, how can you give me a, a solution that will help me uh, uh, stay above my competitors? Do you know that I have threats of new entrants? How do you help me so that I can stay above threats of new entrants? Do you know that my buyers are giving me pressure to reduce price because we are in the era of COVID-19 and prices are going down. People are having problems buying things. Do you know that even in the era of COVID-19, my suppliers are also giving me pressure. They are increasing their their dollar value they are increasing their goods how are you going to help me to overcome these things that is what you have to do summarize them in a presentation point by point slide by slide let the, let the client or the prospect know that indeed you understand your business and you can really give them the solution you can give them the 
the the product or service that you provide the product or service that you have for them that is one critical thing that the, every business developer or every entrepreneur in this stage has to understand or has to find out or has to do you do you do not want to do business as usual you do not have to start with introduction agenda uh, uh, capacity points of present what and, and sometimes people would want to also show companies that they have done businesses with so they give you uh, uh, maybe probably the third the third slide or the fourth slide so you see logos of companies that they have done businesses with okay this company a company b company that they do not want to see that as a matter of fact what your client or your prospect is looking to see is what we call w i f m what's in it for me w i i f m what's in it for me what can you do for me what can you how can you help me how can you help me to let my business stay afloat in covid 19 i have laid off a part of my staff how can they come back to work i have activated business continuity program how do i make sure that i stay in business amidst covid 19 how do i recoup the, uh, the 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 loss that i have made in covid 19 businesses have gone down how do i how do i stay make sure that i stay in business you can only do this number one when you know the ins and outs of your own products so you have to you have to understand that the service or the solution that you are providing for the customer or for the prospect it has a solution the the, the 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 solution has been divided into phases there's a benefit part of the solution there's an advantage part of the solution where the person said that okay when i subscribe to your service or your products that you are giving me this is the benefit i will get this is the advantage i will get and this is the the uh, the, the value i will get from subscribing to the service that you are providing for me so my dear brothers and sisters business people entrepreneurs marketers business developers i would entreat all of us to adapt a new strategy we are not in normal times so you cannot afford to do business as usual you cannot afford to do presentations the way you have been doing it before you cannot afford to structure proposals the way you have been doing it before people do not have time to go through a 10 page proposal that talks about your company that talks about your accomplishment that talks about what you can offer what people are looking out for these days is how you can help them get out of their covid 19 uh, issues you, you, you understand so you have to make sure that you really know the business that you are selling to you have to make sure that you 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 you, you understand where they have been coming from where they are now and where they want to go you can do that by doing research about them finding out from their competitors finding out about staff of the company before you go into any presentation or before you send over any proposal make sure you know about that much very well in business today there's a lot of principles that one must follow and the principles that you have to follow one of them includes sales principle and if, even in a sales principle there's a process that it, it, it sales involves a process and one of the process in sales is presentation we have the prospecting stage we have the qualifying your prospecting stage we have the negotiation stage we have the ordering stage we have the uh, contacting stage and we have the presentation stage the presentation stage is where you either meet your prospect one on one and do a business negotiation and, and tell the prospect what you can do for him or her to salvage him from the the problem you find ourselves in this COVID 19 era how can you help their business to stay afloat that's one thing we need to find out and doing a presentation i always tell people that there are four kinds of people you present to or there are four kinds of bias so for example if if i happen to be in a boardroom and i'm selling a solution i have been invited over 
by my prospect to come and sell a solution to their company and say um, there are about four of them in the room. I, I, I call this group of people, I have abbreviated it, I call it MUTE, M-U-T. So every abbreviation stands for a specific buyer. We have the M buyer, the U buyer, the T buyer, and the, and the E buyer, which is MUTE. The M buyer basically is, is the management buyer. What he is looking at, because the management buyer has a complete oversight of the business, every department reports to him so he understands what every department needs he understands what the business dynamics so he has a bit of economics in him he has a bit of technical in him he has a bit of uh, business or marketing in him he has a bit of a bit of operations in him but what he does is that he takes advice or he takes uh, what do you call it recommendations from it, it, it takes recommendation from the line managers or the people that we call the technical users. So these people tell, so for example, if you are an IT person or if you are a telecom sales person trying to sell a tele telecom product to a company and you go into the company and you are trying to pitch your presentation to them, chances are that during your presentation stage, there will be a management buyer who who is some some form of uh, who has some form of complete oversight of the company and there will be a technical buyer who understands the te technical specifications of the product you are selling to them so for example is a product you look at the technical specification the specs of the product okay what are the specs of the product which yam model is it okay if you use what warranty and all of that so that is the m buyer the management buyer and we have the you buyer the you buyer the person that's going to use the product the it person or the it manager might be a technical buyer but he might not be a used buyer or, 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 or a, a, a user who is going to use the product so for example the it person might buy the computer and give it to the reception receptionist to use the computer you understand so for example the receptionist who is going to use a computer would be there or let's say the admin manager will be there representing his staff the receptionist so there's going to be the m buyer which is the management buyer there's going there's going to be the u buyer which is the user then there's going to be the t buyer which is the technical buyer and the last of all the e buyer making the mute the e buyer is the economic buyer so this economic buyer is most in most of the time the finance uh, financial controller, the accountants, the bursa, and all the people who give out cash, the procurement people, make sure that the things are being procured like, pro properly and in a direct, di in the proper way. So there's the, the, so these are the mute buyers, the management buyer M, the user U, the technical buyer T, the economic buyer E, all of these people have different things they look out for when you are doing your presentation. So you have to structure your presentation in a way that you address them to meet their specific needs, what they are looking out for. The economic buyer who is a financial controller is not interested in the specifications of what you are selling to them or what you are pitching to them. The technical buyer may not necessarily be interested in how much it will cost less or how much it will cost higher. The user is not interested in how much it is going to cost less or how much it is going to cost higher. What he wants at the end of the day is that he wants to make sure that what you are providing for them can, can be able to help them uh, uh, execute their job well and good. At the end of the day, the management buyer is there to make sure that they make the right decision. He's there to make sure that they buy the right product. Is there to make sure that they do not uh, buy a wrong product or they do not ask you to come and provide a solution for them that at the end of the day is not going to help them so these are some of the buyers that ladies and gentlemen when you are doing your presentation you have to be mindful of and structure your presentation in a way that it will address them when you are doing business development as, as a business development officer or as a salesperson or even as a marketer these are distinct roles but somehow some way somehow they find themselves together 
at some point in time. When you are being called upon to, you know, um, do a presentation, there's one thing that you have to put in your mind. You have to, you have to understand that selling or sales, it's 80% mindset and 20% technique. I want to repeat that. Sales is 80% mindset and 20% technique or practices or guidance, whatever you may choose to call it. How am I saying that? How you psych your mind, how you prepare your mind, how you position your thinking will let you know if you are going to break through or if the deal is going to flop. Are you positive about the deal? Are you positive about the presentation? Some people walk into presentations and they, they don't look confident at all. They just walk into, walk into presentations and they are not sharply dressed. They are not, you know, they, they just walk there as if they, are, they, they don't have confidence. Any business person has confidence. And the confidence comes as a result of knowing your product. And you can only know your products when you use your product yourself. You understand your product yourself. You can sell your product to your mother. You can sell it to your friend. You can sell it to your, to, to, to your, to your wife. That is when the confidence comes. So in that case, you, so we, we say that be a product of your product. When you become a product of your product, what it means is that you have understood the service you are offering the ins and outs of it. So anytime you are being asked a question about it, you can answer that question and even add value to the person for the person to know that indeed what sol the solution you are providing for him or her, it's something that is worth what that is worth buying into. What are we talking about? We are talking about how we do not have to do business as usual because we are not in normal times we are in times when the whole world has been struck with COVID-19 and businesses are struggling to come up on their feet businesses are struggling to uh, you know be able to um to 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 to, to be to be able to see some form of revenue revenue that has been you know re revenue line going up and as a business person, as an entrepreneur, as somebody who has your small business who wants to go and sell your product or solution to a different company or a prospect, what we are saying is that you do not have to do business as usual. When you are called to present your product or present your solution to the prospect who wants to buy into your solution or when you get the chance to do so, Please be mindful of the normal way we have been doing business where we structure presentations when you, you do introduction, agenda, company profile, mission statement, points of presence, your uh, clients that you've, you've helped over the past years and all of that. Yes, all those ones are good. They provide some form of credibility for your business. But what we are saying now is that these are not the times for it. The prospect do not have a lot of time to listen to all of that. As a matter of fact, they can find out all of that, all of that for themselves when they go to your website. But what you can prove, what, what you can let them know is how you can help them provide a solution for them in these trying times. And we talked about, we talked about the model that you can use to identify their pain points or identify their challenges or problems. And we use the Michael Porter five forces and i said michael porter is the is a professor at the harvard business school who came out with five competitive forces in business and i said that if you're a business person or a management person and uh, or even if you're a marketer you for, for, maybe you have been doing marketing in, in school or wherever you found yourself you might have come across michael porter and his five forces are this number one direct competition number two threat to new entrants. Number three, pressure from buyers. Number four, pressure from suppliers. So you realize that buyers are giving you pressure to reduce your price. 
suppliers are also giving you pressure that their prices are going to increase so that's the the, the pressure from buyers and the pressure from um, and from sellers the fifth one is substitute product there are products that can replace your business or replace your product these products are a threat to your company's product and i give a i give a typical example of somebody selling a laptop a tablet could be a, a substitute product easily for you people can decide to buy a tablet instead of buying a, a laptop from you so these are some of the things that we have to look out for when we are structuring a presentation so that we can be able to win businesses close deals as fast as possible as we can in these times which we find ourselves and i repeat these are not normal times these are not usual times so you cannot do business normally you cannot do business as usual thank you very much i think uh, i'm about to wrap up we are almost getting to an hour now i can you can drop your questions now i can see marquesia is there if you have any question and uh, i see a couple of people here if you have any question just drop your question and uh, i'll be happy to answer your questions for you Marquesia, do you have any question okay so all right so if there are not there are no questions now you you can you can send me your questions later probably there's something i said you didn't understand or there's something that you want more clarity on you can reach me on my number my whatsapp number is zero five seven seven five five one zero three four i repeat zero five seven seven five five one zero three four you can reach me on my whatsapp number and send me questions or clarity that you want you can also send me an email or you can drop me a comment in the comment section on facebook or you can send me a direct email to d s can come d for denmark s for somalia can come k for kenya a for america n for nigeria k for kenya again a for america again and m for mali at gmail.com ds can come at gmail.com thank you very much for sticking and thank you very much for paying attention and listening to um, the presentation all that we are saying is that we are not in normal times and so you cannot do business as usual when you are structuring a presentation when you are doing a business you have to make sure that you do not do it the usual way you have to make sure that you do it in a way that will let the person see that yes you have to do thank you go make that sale happen god bless you and please keep safe bye bye everybody